Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with Sue White, Head of SDN and NFE Marketing at NEC Netcracker. Hi Sue, good to see you again. Hi Martin, good to see you too. Thanks for coming in. Let's begin with this. Very Something very straightforward and simple. I'm sure you can explain it perfectly. <laughs> what is zero touch automation? Okay, so zero touch automation is all about automating as many functions and processes as we can. Um, not everything can be automated, so we say zero touch, and uh, obviously we have to put some physical things into the network, but it's really trying to automate um, as much as is possible. So if we think of services, we want to automate services, uh, be it service design, be it service uh, actually getting that service instantiated all through to the life cycle of that service. But we also have to think bottoms up. We want to put a new device into the network and we want to do that without any operator intervention. So it's really about automating all these processes and, and trying to limit uh, the, the number of, uh, let's say, capabilities that are needed by operators and operations people to intervene. Now, that sounds as a concept, sounds very straightforward and easy, doesn't it? But of course, it's yeah. not in practice. Yeah. It's very much more difficult. What is it about zero touch automation that's proving to be so difficult to implement? I think it's, it's difficult because our environment is changing so much. I mean, if, if we go back and look at OSS, um, OSS, uh, you know, we've been um, semi-automating processes in OSS for some time, but OSS itself is complex, it's old, it needs to evolve. We have a lot of silos there. But now, as we make that evolution towards SDN and FE, and we you know, ev you know, revolutionize, if you like, the operations environment, uh, we're bringing in more silos. So we're bringing in SDN, where you have to um, you know, control different domains, be it optical, be it IP. And then you, know, you really can't control everything within that domain. So then you have to bring hierarchical SDN controllers into the picture. Then we have NFE where we're orchestrating VNFs, but we also have to do the license management of VNFs. And these VNFs themselves are evolving. They're moving to more, you know, uh, let's say cloud native. I mean, many of them aren't quite there yet, but, but you know, eventually we'll get there. So, so we have masses of more entities to manage. So in other words, we have this OSS silo we still have to worry about. We have SDN, another silo. We have NFE, another silo. So not only do we have to automate within these, but we have to automate across them if we're going to do zero touch end-to-end -end automation. And precisely, and, the, and presumably the hardest part, and we know about silos and how you can make those work, mm -hmm. but the horizontal layer across the top exactly. of them, joining them all together, is that where the nub of the problem is? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely where the, the key problem is. And this is where um, for us a, a, is really a key role of orchestration comes in. Um, so we, we need to move to an orchestration environment so that we can start breaking down these layers, we can break down these silos, and we can start um, looking at processes and automation across all the different layers. So again, if we, if we think of service provider networks today, many operators will claim that they virtualize many functions in the networks, which they have. But how many of those are actually operated manually compared to fully automated? And I think the answer will be much more towards the manual side. So I think um, you know, it's critical that, that we introduce automation uh, to get us to, to that um, you know, stage of, of automation. But what's also key is automation needs to, um, sorry, orchestration needs to evolve. Um, so, so what we need to do is, is, again, we need to combine functions across these three silos. Um, so for example, if we want to do configuration management, so a typical FCAPS capability, it shouldn't be just for a, a, a physical network, it should be for a virtualized network. We have one process that supports both. Um, we also need to bring in some new orchestration functions, so we need to evolve the role of orchestration to be more than it is today. So we need, for example, to be able to do things like license management and automate FCAPs as well. So, so we need to broaden that role um, and we need to probably think about how we architect networks differently, particularly as we move to f uh, towards 5G, because that'll have more stringent requirements. So, so we need to start thinking about how we can improve how we actually deploy and architect these networks going forward for automation. You're one company, NEC Netcracker, within a range of companies involved in this. How do you think the industry 
at large, the industry overall, can, can work together or perhaps come up with some kind of solution to expedite this transition to zero touch? Well, I think we need to collaborate a lot more. <laughs> I, I think we're not short of um, groups, be it standards groups, be it open source groups, be it vendor communities, be it service provider communities, coming up with suggestions and options to um, solve some of these problems, which is all great, but we need to work harder and faster to solve some of these problems, like VNF onboarding. We've talked about the problems of VNF boarding for a, a long time now. And we're still talking about it. So I think there's certain things that we need to move ahead on. We understand that. And I think we also have to approach it very pragmatically. I mean, what are the service providers need to automate first? You know, what's the next steps? Uh, you know, sometimes we, we, we sort of get ahead of ourselves on technology. But I think what we need to do is figure out, you know, what are the most important concerns they have and move towards those those areas first. Um, and as an industry, we, we need to certainly have some standards in place but we need to align much faster than we're doing now. Well, at lunchtime, there was an entire table given over to uh, VNF onboarding with Mark Cohn, and uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people were talking and not eating. So There you go. There you it's, go. Uh, yeah. it's and probably a, a whole table full of different views as to how indeed. you write and those then, tasks you know, It shows that people are interested, and there's a lot going on. Yep, absolutely. But as you say, there's still a lot of talk about it. Yep. Okay, let's move on. Uh, you mentioned before the previous question, 5G. How important is automation going to be as we come into preparing for real life 5G? Well, automation is critical for 5G. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, 5G, you know, we're, we, we want 5G to take the industry towards um, supporting better the vertical types of services, not, not just consumer. And if we think about the vertical services, there's all sorts of different new requirements that come into play, more volumes of services. So. We want to be able to slice the network and, you know, virtually slice the network in many different ways to support those vertical industries. So we're talking about things like dynamic network slicing. So you cannot do dynamic network slicing without automation. Um, and you cannot do automation without having a strong orchestration layer in place. And there's many things we still need to understand about this area. You know, there's uh, different groups, Netcrackers working. Uh, for example, with uh, different industry groups, including TM Forum, we have a Catalyst project we're going to be showcasing with several service providers at, uh, in Nice shortly. Um, and it's exactly this topic. It's really understanding better and demonstrating the, you know, the needs and the requirements and, and what we need to do. So, so for sure. And, and also when we think about the more critical types of services we want with 5G, um, you know, we're moving to an architecture now where we have more distributed compute environments so that you can get the latency for certain um, services. And again, we need to be able to automate that. We need to be able to automate which services go where, which resources are used in which environment. So, so the building blocks we're putting together now are absolutely critical for those uh, early 5G and, and certainly, you know, the full 5G types of services and IoT services that are to come. Would it be right to say then that you sort of, it's, it's, complex, but you're optimistic about it. Yeah. Looking a year ahead then from now, where do you think we'll be? Will the talking be over or will it still be going on? <laughs> yeah, I hope some of the talking <laughs> will be over. Yeah, we, we, we always have this and I know, you know, it, it takes a lot longer than we expect um, to do certain things, but I certainly, at least with SDNFE, I feel like because of the deployments that are in place right now, the service providers and the vendor community understand a lot better the, the problems that need to be solved. So I, I think we're hoping that things will move a little faster now that we're in real commercial environments. Um, and 5G is there. I mean, we have operators that are ready to deploy. Um, and we absolutely have to have a fully virtualized network in place for that. And we need more automation. So, so let's just certainly hope next year we're not, uh, we're not just talking. Well, it's very interesting. Anyway, regardless, Sue White, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.